We all know that Bitcoin and perhaps to a slightly lesser degree Ethereum have taken the financial world by storm and have been grabbing headlines because of the meteoric rise in their price. Bitcoin maximalists, the true OG fans, are convinced that Bitcoin will eventually replace the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. Ethereum advocates argue that Ether is ultrasound money. In other words, it will not be prone to wild price fluctuations. Whether Bitcoin or Ethereum are a good store of value or a good hedge against inflation in the long run is yet to be seen. But currently, they are not considered effective mediums of exchange because of their high price volatility. Now, think about it. Would you buy a cup of coffee with Bitcoin knowing that it could double in value in like a month? Probably not. We all know about the guy who spent 10,000 Bitcoins in the early days of the cryptocurrency to buy two pizzas, right? Life can be unfair. Tough luck. Not just Bitcoin and Ether. In fact, a bulk of the cryptocurrencies, and there are several hundreds, perhaps even thousands of them, are considered extremely volatile because of their small market cap. Well, just like the stock market, right? We're often told to stick to large cap blue chip stocks because the small cap ones can be really risky. Now, this is where stable coins come in. As the name suggests, stable coins are an attempt to create a different class of cryptocurrencies that are not volatile, hence stable. A stable coin is pegged to a reserve asset, like a real world currency or a fiat currency, for example, the US dollar. So one stable coin equals one US dollar. So are there different kinds of stable coins? Sure. We've got fiat collateralized stable coins such as the USDC or USD coin that's pegged one is to one to the US dollar. So for one USDC, you've got one US dollar. These are collateralized or rather backed by reserve assets. So for every one USDC that's in circulation, you've got one US dollar in reserve that's perhaps lying in a bank account or a vault. These reserves are maintained by independent custodians and audited regularly by third parties to ensure that these reserves actually exist. USDC, for example, is maintained by Circle, a financial services company, in a joint collaboration with Coinbase, a popular cryptocurrency exchange. Next, we've got crypto collateralized stablecoins such as the DAI, which is also pegged one is to one to the US dollar. So for one DAI, you get one US dollar. But instead of having US dollars as a reserve asset, these stablecoins are backed by cryptocurrencies such as Ether. And because Ether is prone to higher volatility, these are often over collateralized, which means that for every $100 worth of DAI that you need to borrow, you need to collateralize $150 worth of Ether. Let's say you go to your bank and say, hey guys, I want a one crore loan. And your bank says, sure, but we need your house worth 1.5 crores as collateral because what if the price of your house goes down by 30%? Well, imagine your house is ether, prone to high volatility, and hence you've got to over collateralize. And finally, we've got algorithmic stable coins where a smart contract, which is essentially a written computer code that automates and executes agreements. Now, this smart contract regulates the circulation of stable coins depending on its price, classic demand and supply. Let's assume we have a stable coin that's algorithmically pegged to the US dollar. So for one US dollar, you've got one algorithmic stable coin. Now, if lots of people start buying this stable coin, this would cause the price of the stable coin to rise, which means one algorithmic stable coin no longer equals one US dollar. It's more expensive now. So the smart contract that I mentioned earlier would add more stable coins into the system to ensure that the price is back to a one is to one peg. Similarly, if lots of people start selling the stable coin, that would put downward pressure on the price. It's cheaper now. And so the smart contract would remove stable coins from circulation to ensure that the price comes back up and is back to a one is to one peg. Pretty simple, right? So key takeaways. Stable coins are not supposed to be volatile. They are usually pegged to a world currency like the US dollar and are either fiat collateralized crypto collateralized or algorithmic. There are numerous stable coins in the market, but here are some popular ones. There's USDC, there's USDT or Tether, there's DAI, there's Terra UST, there's Paxos Standard, and then there's Celos CUSD. 
Stable coins are exploding in use cases from cross-border remittances to day-to-day -day transactions like buying a cup of coffee in many different parts of the world to blockchain-enabled games that are now quite the rage. The popularity of stable coins may be soaring, but central banks around the world haven't quite warmed up with them just as yet. That's because stable coins threaten the sovereignty of their own currencies. If everyone's using stable coins, what good is the national currency? Now, these guys know they have to act fast, which is why they're exploring their own state-issued, government-backed stablecoin called the CBDC, or Central Bank Digital Currency. But more on that in the next video. I'll see you soon.